for a cigarette. The name Eric Garner is now enshrined in a grim annal of history. It joins Mike Brown, Romarley Graham, Alan Bluford, Dontre Hamilton, and thousands of others who were murdered by those their taxes helped pay for cops. In many ways, Garner's case is even more egregious than Brown's, for it was videotaped, and one sees his takedown, his incessant choking, his unconsciousness, and shortly thereafter, his death. Now the words, I can't breathe, have become joined with the cry, hands up, reminders of the Garner and Brown killings at the hands of police. Both cases are also noted for the behavior of grand juries, which now appear reckless beyond belief in their inability to return indictments against cops. The grand jury immigrated here from England, where, as it was then called, Grand Assizes, a body of about a dozen knights under the direction of a baron or some other noble, would investigate cases and charge people. Later, they became tools of the king. Today, they are instruments of the prosecutors and used, just as under kings, to target whom they wish and to clear whom they wish. Outrage stems from the long history of its use to protect cops, yes, even killer cops. This, while the nation is really awash in mass incarceration, the majority of whom have never had a grand jury indictment, unlike the average cop. The system is constructed to protect cops, no matter how outrageous their behavior. That's just a fact. And as the nation now celebrates historic events from the civil rights movement of half a century ago, the grim and ugly present of black life and black death in America makes that glowing history feel hollow indeed. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Views and opinions made of Comcast does not reflect its staff, its affiliates, or associates. And with that being said, viewer discretion is advised. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena for you old heads out there. With that being said, the title of today's show is All Black Men Are Brothers. Why do I pick this title? I picked this title from an old Shaw Brothers movie. If any of y'all are familiar with Shaw Brothers, it's an old kung fu movie. Okay. And it, the, the title of it was called All Men Are Brothers. And so <clears throat> you had the overthrowing of the Qing Dynasty, you had the Ming Dynasty in place, and so the rebels... They said, you know, when the guards came, the government officials came and killed one of them, he said, when you kill one of us, you kill all of them. So then that's what started the Chinese revolt, and then, put, then you had the Ming and Qing dynasty. Okay. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> all black men are brothers here. <laughs> and, you know, and the Ming Qing dynasty is actually based on factual and actual history. So with that being said, I want to introduce guests to my right. Introduce. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Ebony Knight. I could name all the organizations I work with, but I'm just for the empowerment of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who I am. It's your boy Vincent Cheeks, uh, music, TV show host, actor, activist, great man extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right, Brother Yanga. Yes, sir. I can't, you know, it's hard to come after that. <laughs> <laughs> just happy, it's hard to come after Brother Vince. I'm mean, just happy to be here. Another hot topic, do our thing. You know how we do, son. That's right. Brother Vince, good to have Sister Ebony on. Yes, thank you. Ready to get thank to the, you, yeah, and uh, talk about these these hot topics, man. It's been tumultuous. It has been it a, has, a serious has. thing. But before we jump into that, I'm going to make this brief thank you announcement. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who came out Friday and participated in the 11 Alive Canathon. How'd that go? Oh, uh, man, it went awesome, man. It was just people coming through all day from 5 in the morning to 1 p.m. We had people mm. coming through, dropping off canned That's goods. We had busloads uh, from schools uh, bringing in busloads full of canned goods. Nice. Man, it was yeah. a beautiful thing. Uh, Be on Top Entertainment. Uh, we put the entertainment on, and, and everything went good. All the artists came out and did their thing. 
it was a it was a very well organized event for a great cause and it went over really well. Man, so that's awesome. Eleven Alive, Salvation Army, Fraternal Order of Eagles, thank you, thank you, the artists, uh Melissa Rose, uh D Jones, Coda Santez, Team Praise led by Kia Jeffers, all the fabulous artists, BJ Bars that came out. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. And with that, we're gonna dive into the show. All right. Uh man. I'm going to throw out a couple of names first. Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice. Everyone should be familiar with those names. I'm going to give a brief synopsis of what happened in each situation, and then we're going to um, each get into our own perspectives and opinions. Uh, most recently, there was Tamir Rice. He was a 12-year-old that was shot down a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, in Chicago. Uh, Cleveland. No, in Cleveland. Cleveland. Yep. Uh, he was playing outside at a playground with a, a, a toy BB gun that mm -hmm. did not have the orange oh, yeah. kitty uh, tip, on tip on it to let you know that it's a kid's gun. So there was someone that called in saying that some, a kid was at the playground playing with a gun, right. but the caller even stated that he thought the gun was fake. He right. said that two or three times right. during the call to 911. And so when the police officers pull up, they park the car, jump out within two seconds, put two bullets in his chest. Right. And their uh, response to that is that he didn't respond to their verbal commands to stop and put his hands in the air, which I don't know how within two seconds mm -hmm. you can give a command, let alone have someone respond to it right. that's 12 years old. Okay. Uh, and so I don't know if anybody's out there seen the video. The video is really hard to watch because clearly this cop jumps out and, and, and puts two in his chest with no forethought. Um, so that's Tamir Rice. We had Eric Garner last week. The, the grand jury came back with a decision to not indict uh, Officer Pantaleo okay. in the choking death of Eric Garner, which happened on July 17th this past summer. Staten Island. In Staten Island, correct. Um, so from there, on top of the well, Eric Garner was accused of selling Lucy cigarettes, right. which are loose cigarettes that can be sold for roughly 50 cents. Um, he had been arrested for it in the past, but this particular day when he got choked out, he did not have any cigarettes on him. He was not selling Lucy's. He had just broken up a fight between two younger kids, and then that's when the police came over and started harassing Wait a minute. He messing up our revenue. <laughs> you know, when the kids fight, then we can put some of them in jail. He messing up our money-making scheme. He here. apparently was messing up something really bad. because He was messing up our out. money scheme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go they ahead. They choked man. him out. Uh, they killed the man. And even as recently as this past Thursday or Friday, they said there's new video, a seven-minute video. Uh, there's new video that shows the police scrambling for seven minutes before they called the EMT because they pretty much realized yeah, yeah. that they, they had murdered the man and yeah. they didn't know how to handle the situation. Um, and then, of course, Mike Brown shot and killed uh, on August 9th by Officer Darren Wilson, roughly at high noon um, in broad daylight. Uh, Mike Brown allegedly had stolen some cigars from uh, a market Officer Wilson pulled up on them walking down the street, asked them to get out the street politely. They refused. Uh, at some point, there was a scuffle between Officer Wilson and Mike Brown. Shots were fired. Mike Brown runs. Officer Darren Wilson pursues, uh, shoots at Mike Brown roughly 10 times, ultimately fatally shooting him in the head with the final shot. Um, okay. And so, with all of that summed up, my question for the panel, and anyone can start, let's start with Ebony since she's our guest. Is there justice or is there just us? Um, <clears throat> I would say that's definitely a rhetorical question because <laughs> there is no justice um, as we have seen. And it's not just us. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of people are really, um, a lot of white people are really upset. Like, well, it happens to us too. Right. And so, and correct, it does. it does happen to you as well. Um, I actually recently went to Dublin, Georgia to, um, to an event for David Hooks, a shooting for David Hooks. David mm, Hooks was a yeah. white man. I was asked when he I got to it. Dublin, he was shot by the police. I was asked when I got to Dublin by a few people, why are you here? Um, a couple older white people asked me, you know, what are you doing here? So yes, it does happen. Um, it's not just us, but we are targeted. 
Um, wait, 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 they don't mind the carnage. You, what you doing around there? Yeah, they asked me what I was doing there. He was shot by the but he was unarmed? Oh, yeah, he was in his home. And, and they just came in and shot him? Wait, wait, wait. The protesters asked you? What yes, you protesters there? asked me. It's East Dublin. <laughs> 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 yes. We go, gotta dirty understand. South, honey. You got to go way down South sometimes. Listen here, sweetie. You got to understand there's Georgia, there's Atlanta. Right. I understand. Right. Right. I understand. But I took that opportunity to stand up, you know, with my friends who also went, and I took the opportunity to stand against injustice. And as I was there, it was just like a civil rights movement. There were black people standing across the street. There were black people, you know, that w wouldn't come to the courthouse, but they were observing. And I took that opportunity to go and ask them, "Have you heard of David Hooks?" Yes. How about Melvin Williams? They had never heard of Melvin Williams. Who's that? Melvin no, Williams was shot. also shot by the police, a black man in Dublin, same mm. city. No one's heard of Melvin Williams, but everyone had heard of David Hooks. So it doesn't happen, you know, it's, it's, it is other people, but we are targeted. The system is the problem. So, right. and the system doesn't mind the carnage of poor white people, you know, rich white people who can pay their way out because the system is designed to screw us over. It's just the people. Right, and it's designed to protect the 1%. Right. There's another white case that y'all might have heard of. Uh, there was a teacher, she was leaving a party about a month or so ago. The cop thought she may have been intoxicated, so he tried to stop her from leaving the party. Uh -huh. She, apparently, as she was leaving, almost hit the cop with her car. Oh, and he shot her, her in the head. Of course, he opened fire <laughs> shot and shot her through the window and killed her, and she was a white school teacher. So that wasn't even about race well, or she tried classism. to run me over. <clears throat> so I, I totally get the point that white people are making about um, it happens to us too, but our point is that it happens to African American individuals disproportionately amount of times, you know, and it's usually a white officer in a black male. Mm -hmm. um, the one, system has been designed to target us. Yeah. And what something I heard on uh, Fareed Zakaria today, he said that there's basically two American justice systems. Because the original American justice system was set up for white people only. And the other American justice system just happened to be a byproduct of the slaves getting their freedom. <laughs> and now we got to figure out what to do with these niggas mm -hmm. too now. You know. And so. Um, well, I remember last time we were on the show, and you know, Yang could back me up on this. We talked about body cams and how okay. in Whittier, California, they said the crime rate in the. Complete, complete complaint rate went down. 88%. 88%. So okay. I'm just, I want to put this out there because I'm, even before the show, because, you know, we have conversations before the show where there was a, I guess, a pre-debate on cameras. Well, I just want to say this. I'm not saying cameras are the be-all and end-all to solve police brutality, but it gives us a perspective because what you read about Michael Brown I heard three, four other mm -hmm. stories, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. stories. I heard they were wrestling. Right. He grabbed, so I'm like hearing all these stories. That's and so right. what, and this goes out to Gideon, I don't want nobody holding my hand. The technology allows me to see for myself. You know, I have 2020 vision. Right. So I don't need nobody <laughs> holding him and saying, you know what? What mm -hmm. you actually saw. Oh, yes, was, because they no. will tell you something right. different than know. what you actually saw. Right. So, 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 yeah, I just want to put that out there. Um, yeah, I know you got to take on that. I, I mean, yeah, exactly. I agree with you as far as the cameras, uh, and and you see the the proof in Los Angeles how it reduced police brutality or excessive force used by the police were reduced. My whole my my thing is though with all with the cameras, ju the judicial system, everything is follow through. We can have right. all the cameras, we can have whatever we want. If there is no follow through, if there is no action that happens after these blatant crimes are committed against <laughs> us as a people, then it's all for naught. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, after the protest, where are we going and what are we going to do after the protest? Mm -hmm. After we done selling the Mike Brown t-shirts and the Eric Garner t-shirts, right. you know, and, and, and all the rest <laughs> of these things like this, where are we going? What type of changes are we willing to make? What steps are we willing to, I mean, uh, what steps are we willing to take to see these changes put into effect? And I think that that's the question that the Africans here in America, the community of Africans here in America has to ask themselves. What are we doing? What right. steps do we take after this? You know, quit quit allowing them to isolate and individualize these incidents. You know, they, mm -hmm. they say Mike Brown, Eric Garner, but we're talking about systematic, mm -hmm. the systematic targeting of African people here in America. We're yes. talking about genocide. Mm 
right. taking place right here. And until it's addressed as a whole, a world issue, like I, like you and I were talking. Yes, sir. I was saying one of the things, I was saying with all the marching around New York, why they didn't march on the UN? Mm-hmm. Tell you it. know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Why yeah. they didn't lay in front yeah. of the yeah. UN? Yeah. Yeah. To present our case to the world. We have to show the world that yes. us as a people, as a nation of people here who a crime have been committed against us right. called slavery. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, in what we call the African thing, the Maafa, right. in, in slavery, that a crime has been committed. And from that time until now, crimes are still being committed against people of African descent. So if, if we still keep going for these civil rights and this, right. this national thing and going and isol- allowing them to isolate the incidents with mm-hmm. just Mike Brown and just Sean Bell and just right. uh, Kath- the, mother, the grandmother Catherine Johnson right. and right. just Oscar Grant and there are all these little sp- isolated incidents right. until we put it as a whole and do what the Palestinian people are doing and say, hey, look what uh, Netanyahu is doing to our people. We have to come to it and say, look what America is doing to us. Right. Right. We, we haven't done a thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's Palestinians over there. Palestinians, they blew myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and, and this is the same, and they're using the same reasoning right. that Netanyahu is doing. You, they resist arrest. If you, black mean, people yeah. didn't resist arrest, we wouldn't have to choke them to death. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're, doing, they're doing the same thing that Netanyahu is doing. Right. So we have to do well, the same thing and bring it on the world, bring it on the world court. Where do you think Netanyahu got it from? Exactly. I mean, America's I mean, he's government is his right. big brother, and then the British government is our big brother. So yeah. it's, right. you know, the triangle of death, if you want to call mm-hmm. it that. Um, but the, on this issue of body cams, um, you know, a lot of people are claiming that the body cams are the answer. A lot of people want the body cams to be the answer because it gives the cops perspective. It gives I the cops perspective. I don't, want, I, don't want, I don't want people to get in the mindset it's the be all, end right. all. Right. Mm-hmm. It's one of. And so right. that's why, you know, I was. Go, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. So one, I'm just, of the, yeah. one of the criticisms, or a couple of the criticisms for body cams is, of course, the cost. Um, okay. CNN interviewed Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts uh, yesterday, and he said roughly for his Baltimore City body cam for his officers, it was anywhere from nine to twelve million dollars. And you know, uh, and you uh, Negroes are not worth nine oh, to twelve million dollars. Right. <laughs> right. What's the uninflated cost? Because that's the cost of, right. of how much is going into my pocket and right. Right. They just need tape cell phones to their chest. Exactly. <laughs> I'm well, sure I can be done for cheaper. My issue with them complaining about how much these body cams will cost to put in is how much does it cost for an MRAP machine? How much does it cost right. for these sonic, sonic yeah. boom deafening yeah. <laughs> arsenal right. weapons right. that y'all have? How much is it costing to militarize, militarize our police? The police. Right. That That's same right. money that you're spending on militarization can be citizens. going towards protecting spending. Uh, citizens and body cams and things of that nature. And I can tell you the the, the face masks, the gas masks, those mm-hmm. are at least they it'll cost me a hundred and fifty dollars. So I can imagine they, yeah. they got those just yeah. like yeah. that they dispose of. Yeah. But so, it's, it's, it's basically, I mean, it's blatant. They're saying that the African in America, they're black lives. When you say black lives matter, their sign says black lives are not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So they're basically saying that you're not worth your complaints and, and your gripes and your crying and your bitching and moaning is not worth that expense that the government would have to put into the body cams. That's what I mean by making ourselves um, making ourselves potent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what 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 do we do? Political, you know, like now, you know, we black nationalists. That's right. So, and I understand black nationalists, black nationalism, the way that Malcolm was teaching black nationalism as evolved into a revolutionary internationalism with the black nationalist overtures, and that is controlling the political, the economics in our community. That's right. Christmas is coming up. Black folk finna spend big money. The big no. wheels, the I know people who are getting loans exactly <laughs> to, for Christmas. Christmas. And and a that's, lot of, it's a mentality it's a issue. Mentality. And here it is. It's and, and a lot of but we don't understand how capitalism works mm-hmm. on a larger scale. So what we understand is from the consumer perspective. Right. And and, and what I mean by that is every group of people have accountable spending. Mm-hmm. Right. The uh, the uh, Hispanic people are not going to spend their dollars with people who don't support immigration. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Point right, blank. Right. That's right. They're not going to buy, a, if a corporation is like we're dead set against immigration, we're not hiring Hispanic people, they're not going to spend their dollars. The Jewish population is not going to spend their money with anybody who supported uh, Nazi Germany during World War II. That's right. They're not going to do it. African American people would go out here, we would buy rims, we would buy tires from Firestone. From whomever. And they'd be raping the Congo. They'll be in That's Africa right. committing all kinds of atrocities. Why do we do that, though? I mean, it's because we come from a place we're Gucci, of nothing. Baby. But no, a, 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 and a lot of times we don't know so much. I'm telling you, there are, right. we are missing so much. 
and that's one point I don't want to jump ahead. But no, that's, but with with our young people, we are not instilling in them a, a knowledge base that um, helps them to see even delayed gratification, right? Or right. to understand um, the power of building something, or you know, the power of my money. Right. I may only have a dollar now, or you may have a dollar. Together, we can make it rain. Like nobody's really thinking. <laughs> like let's bring these two dollars together. Mm, right. You know, it's it's really a mentality issue. Okay. But I wanted to go back to what you were saying about um, strategic organizing on going. I've never waited for um, a, a verdict to be read. I never expected justice right. in any of these cases. Mm. I mean, when um, go back to even Trayvon Martin, I never waited and said, well, are they going to... I never thought that they were going to find Zimmerman guilty of anything since they didn't want to take him to court in the first place. Right. 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 Like, right. you don't expect justice from an unjust system. Mm -hmm. Like, it's time for us to wake up and say, okay, well, what do we need to do now? Mm -hmm. It's time, and, and don't wait for something else to happen. And then now we're going to go march yeah. where they say we can march. Right. At, the time they, <laughs> at the time, they say we can march. Right. No, we're going to go march to their houses right. because we're, they shouldn't be watching um, dinner and um, eating dinner and watching us on the news. Right. Um, we're not going to lay down on Spring Street. We're going to lay on Governor Deal Street. Exactly. Like, we're going to go exactly to where the problem is. It's time to, like, address the problem. And the problem is the system. Like, if our, our laws are changing, and even the body cams, if we have those body cams, that will raise accountability. Mm -hmm. But right. people are recording the deaths of our brothers right. every day. Mm -hmm. And, and so it being videoed, it, it, it's like, oh, we don't care. It, you can show me killing your son on, on, on TV, mm -hmm. and I won't be punished for it. So now what do we do with the fact that nobody is going to be punished? The law doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Because I was going to go to law school until I realized I needed loophole school. Because the laws <laughs> aren't right. made really for us. Exactly. Right. Uh, to your point about the, the body cams and Eric Garner's death being videotaped, and everybody in the whole world can see that this man is choked out. Right. On Illegally. Camera. Illegally on camera. And so my thing is with this whole body camera issue, even if something is recorded, they're, the system's job is to find any little thing that you did wrong mm -hmm. to make it, okay make it okay that the end result happened. Like with Eric Garner, he was asked, he was questioning them, why are you bothering me? Right. I'm not selling cigarettes. I'm not doing anything. Why are you bothering? He he had his hands up like this right. to and let they, you know he wasn't he doing wasn't anything. This man was about <laughs> six six, almost three hundred pounds. Every cop out there was smaller than he mm -hmm. was. If he wanted to, he could have really gave them all a tussle mm -hmm. to the point where they really probably would have needed right, to restrain they him right, that right. badly mm -hmm. and, and kill him. But this man was like, man, I didn't do anything, man. Y'all always bothering me and harassing me. I, just leave me alone. He put his hands up and they come choke him out. And so the system is like, well, he didn't comply. The cop told him to put his hands behind his back. He didn't comply. Mm -hmm. So because he didn't comply, Officer Pantaleo is justified in the amount of force that he used to take this man down. So you don't have a right the to ask a question to him, right. like, what did I do? You can't know if you're right, saying anything. That. And then Pantaleo look back, he's, he, what, he's already looked at and being investigated for three other, uh, That's right. uh, mm -hmm. he had three other complaints against him. But it goes back to that again, it goes back to the initial thing that if we're, if, and I like what Sister Ebony said, if we're relying on and waiting for a justice system to give us any type of justice, then we're just wasting our time. Mm -hmm. right. Until we start to take our lives, we practice what, you know, I love to say that cool Jack Khalil, self-determination. We have to practice self-determination. We have to take our own destinies in our hand, mm -hmm. and we have to start to manifest them. Right. You know, I'm an advocate of not just political and economic rights, but also in the armed self-defense uh, uh, of ourselves as a people. I don't advocate going out and committing violence That's and right. doing an offensive, but hell, if you're going to murder me and maim me any damn way, I'm going to protect myself. I'm <laughs> from Jersey. I believe you know in street saying? justice. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. why I said, you know, I would have went to Darren Wilson's mama's house, something. Yeah. It's time for somebody to be held accountable yeah. Yeah. for the, right. or otherwise no one's going to. Because just like you said, he was so big, he could have fought back. Right. We have been programmed that we don't fight back. Yeah. Um, right. I watched a video uh, a couple days ago of so many people who were um, killed and unarmed. All you heard her, hear her keep saying is unarmed. She unarmed, named another right. black man unarmed. Uh, I know and that's a problem. Yeah. Being unarmed is obvious, obviously yeah. a problem. Yeah. 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 We need to be armed. Yeah. We need to teach yeah, our right. children you know, um, gun safety. We need to take them to the range, Absolutely. teach them how to Absolutely. shoot. That's it's right. time for us Absolutely. to stop being sitting ducks. We need to not be unarmed. Absolutely. And we need to be taught that, yes, we are supposed to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the system isn't always right. And that, and that goes back to even 
middle school, grade school, they are taught, and even in the South, it's so much worse. They have armed officers in your schools. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me let me let me back something up real quick here. You and Vince keep talking about the system. I have a different perspective on that. Okay. As a black nationalist, I believe if you had people with a you know um when you may have those grand juries, those are people. And like you said, Vince, when you when you have somebody looking for any little thing wrong, those are people. Right. So I say replace the people, with. you know, with um, well, it, it goes well. Someone else from the Matrix. Is right. That's, right. 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 <laughs> that's who was on, on the grand on. jury. Oh no, I'm, I'm glad you said <laughs> that. I'm glad you said that. I'm saying come up with a transparent system, which offers transparency. I wrote that down myself. Okay, transparency good. Transparency would be. Right. But it's just like how you remember when you read about the whole voting system in, right. in yeah, Venezuela? Right. I think that should be applied towards our judicial system. And I and I think we will see some drastic changes. Well, I think they I heard this morning watching the news that they said the governor or the mayor is already uh thinking about re uh redoing the grand jury process in New, well, only, in New York. Not only do uh, the states need to redo that, but Eric Holder need to get up off his butt <clears throat> and put the federal government into effect. The whole purpose of the federal mm -hmm. government is when the state can't do their right. job, then they come in right. and, you know, say, mm -hmm. automatically that should be a federal right. investigation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just like me committing a crime and be like, well, Yanga, I guess you got to find me guilty. Right. We investigated yeah, ourselves. Right. We found ourselves <laughs> innocent. Right. 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 So and, it's a conflict of interest. But it's like the federal time. government seems to be in a conflict of interest. They seem to be in the bed with the state because when Eric Calder right. came to Atlanta, he said nothing. No, he he didn't. didn't have any, you know, he just said we're going to have something written up in a few days. He really came to calm the Negroes down. That's right, why it was right. at Ebenezer Baptist mm -hmm. Church. That's why when the, you no revolutionary people stood up and had something to say they shunned them there were people who turned their head away from them and then they escorted them out yeah and well, so he went there to are Cleveland so many, and had a whole different thing there are so even many have factions within the movement of, mm -hmm. of justice and you know human rights there's so many there's the religious and the non-religious there's mm -hmm. the violent and the non-violent right. mm -hmm. and and we we've got to find a, a place where we can work together you know, we might not agree on this. We might not agree on that, but we can work together on this issue. We can work together with the youth. You know, we can do something to lay our differences aside instead of just, you know, kicking them out of the church. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I agree with that. I want to go back to this. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, go, no, go ahead. Yeah, Vince. Um, yeah. I want to put this statement out there about the black spending power that you were talking about a minute ago. Uh, a shout out to my boy Chef Dizzle. He put this information on the internet. Chef I told him, Dizzle. Chef Dizzle. I told, Chef him Dizzle. Him I, I told him I was going to shout him out, but he he put the information of the black spending power equals one point one trillion dollars. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Yeah. Black spending power equals one point one trillion dollars, and then he went on to say that they don't respect our skin. But they love our money. Love that money. How would well, you respond to that? Though? Well, Yanga uh, came up with a very interesting solution. He said if you would uh, start insuring, what it was a million dollars? Start let, let let the federal government start putting a million dollars on black people. I know that's right. And every time, <laughs> and, and they have to pay out to us every yes, time we murder. Yes. Because they see capitalists only understand money. Money, you're right. You right. have the insurance company. See, this is what I mean by strategy. Police, <laughs> yeah, public telling police don't kill another. <laughs> Don't kill another Negro. You know what I'm saying? Right. It has to. It, it has to. They, they would they have, fight with us for the laws right, to be the changed. Right, for the laws to be changed. You know what I'm saying? You start being insured. Black right. Man. So, you know, when you look at, and that's what I mean by the whole thing, even when we talk about transparency and these grand juries and things of that nature, they're going to go with the best. It, they're going to go, people always, it's only natural. People try to preserve their lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, and you're looking at in a capitalist, imperialist, capitalist country, uh, imperialist, capitalist nation, and this capitalism based and founded off racism. First of all, they already have preconceived notions of mm -hmm. Africans here in America. Right, right. They already have these images of black people in their mind. Then they're used to a certain lifestyle. So all of that goes into it when they're looking at a grand jury, when they're looking at indicting and all of that thing. It's up to us there again to go back when I say self-determination to take take our own lives in our own control. Accountable spending. 
That's right. For us people, I like what Ebony said, that you have one of the things, though, and I agree with uh, what Sister Ebony said, we have so many different facets in the movement. That's right. And we um, one of the, a book I recommend for everybody to read, Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. That's right. He talks That's about the Algerian Revolution. Uh, and one of the things he says in that is you can't tell the people how to fight for their freedom. That's right. One That's of right. the things that has affected us as Africans here in America, we still believe in that charismatic leadership, that mm -hmm. one-man right. leadership, mm -hmm. instead of the masses of the people being trained right. to lead themselves lead and empower themselves. themselves. Right. That's right. So when you have that, a one-man leadership, then that means one doctrine, one ideology, That's one right. philosophy is the right That's way. Right. We're talking about fighting for our freedom, our empowerment, our liberation, our right to live without being willfully hindered or uh, encumbered by any group of people based on our based on our descent our ethnicity what? so with that man we need to incorporate all the fights from politics to like you said oh, the brothers out there yes. with picket signs to people yes. throwing bricks yes. whatever it takes to get us to that level mm -hmm. let me say this to the Negroes <laughs> not only have a multiple like a council instead of one leadership yeah. but let's stop knocking each other when we come up with solutions yeah. right. I was listening to the radio station right. the other day and a brother called in like apparently he's been watching the arena okay. <laughs> he said yeah we need to get involved in the vehicle arena and vote and then the guy was like well see it don't matter because I, I I voted yeah like, yo, one, one vote, vote. Right. you know, right. I, I didn't vote. vote. Right. I, I didn't vote. get it, I wanted it to work right. It didn't work yeah. right. It didn't, My vote didn't, right. didn't get work. No, I'm saying stop knocking everybody's solution. Let yeah. everybody, because I believe that black people have brilliant minds, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black men Most and black definitely. women. So whatever Most solutions definitely. we come up, we put them all on the table and execute them all. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to dismiss any solutions. Right. I'm saying, I, I say one solution is better than no solution. Yes. Right. Oh, piggyback. Oh, go ahead. Emma. Yeah. Um. I wanted to. When what you were saying, I wrote a note here about the content, content, uh, continuity of leadership. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I was seeing. Um. Even the event with um Eric Holder, you know, was in the church. There were a lot of people there, older people. Um. The first night after the Eric Garner decision, there were no no older people like in leadership um at that rally. Right. And there, there was just a really a huge issue because they were all female leaders and I and, mm. and sisters I know we can lead the revolution by ourselves but if our brothers are being killed every day and our brothers voices need to be heard then I'm gonna need you to pass the mic to a brother right. and so that's an issue and then with the leadership you know everybody's not go gonna follow everybody right. you know I'm gonna be cussing I'm gonna be ready to fight you right. might not want to follow me mm. you <laughs> might want to go follow somebody mm. that's gonna be you mm. know peaceful and nonviolent and and you know sing hymns and yeah. hold hands right. Because that's, but I can flow over there with you, or I can flow over here where we getting it popping because I can. But there, if you, if our leaders don't understand that different people need different types of leadership, and everybody can't flow with everybody, then our leaders can come together, yeah. and our yeah. leaders can, you know what I'm saying? And and it can be everybody. It's not like we got to have our name on it. Oh, this is. Ebony Night Media, blah, blah, right. blah. When it all comes to, well, this is my event or this is right. my organization. Centralized leadership. Right, exactly. Well, that's why I want to give a shout out to the Crips, the Bloods, the Gangsta Side. Go Rip. Sex, all money, the, murder. Right. <laughs> these, are, these are what I've always told the elders, and they, it goes yes. over their head. Yeah. They don't have a centralized leadership, they have a council. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, but that goes over their head, you know, tell the elder, oh, well, they, they be selling drugs, they be doing drugs. I was like, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. Leadership. Mm -hmm. You're missing the point that they all sit down at the table. Mm -hmm. And they sit down with the other street tribes at the table. You know, tell them, yeah. Yes. yeah this, is how we, this, is how, this is how we do, especially in Atlanta. But I know Vince wanted to say okay. something. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was just saying. No, this go how, we, okay. Yeah, go ahead. This is how, but this is how we do it. And shouts out to everybody, man, that's working with the council, working with the arena in Atlanta, man. My, my folks, Gangster Disciples, Growth and Developments, my beloved, you know what I'm saying? Cover it up, uh, 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 Lords. All the people, man, really Niggas working, trying to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, trying to come together, man, and bring it together to bring it to fruition, this black unity. And just realizing that all of us are just different tribes on with the same mission and the same goals, same, same structures. Mm -hmm. And the same structures. And, That's right. and with you naming all the gangs you just, I don't want people out there thinking that we're promoting gangs. And, and, no, and, I'm promoting and what, structure. What they're, 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 I'm a black nationalist. Right. Is violence and drugs and all that. But, but if you understand point, the government, you will understand yeah. that the government is the biggest gang that there yeah. is. And I'm from the North. I'm from New Jersey where actual gangsters are your governor. Girl. So let you better watch, <laughs> you better watch in your mouth, girl. They're gonna send them folks after you. Girl. Governor Christie is like the that. biggest thug I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you, uh, when Believe you understand the one that shut down the bridge there on purpose, he, on yes, purpose, he did. Yeah. When you like understand this. organizational leadership and organizational yeah. structures, that gangs are just an out, um, an outshoot of 
our community and yeah. the lack of structures in our community and us always trying to create community wherever we are. Right. To your point, gangs were started because white institutions like the mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club wouldn't let black boys and girls in, so they started forming. That's how the Crips were formed. Yeah. They and, 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 and to defend themselves. And like you said, we call them, right. you know, I, I prefer to call them street tribes because this Thank gang you. has a, you, you know, a, a bad connotation to it. It's American and things of that. Yeah, it's American yeah. institutions. Yeah. It's American institutions. It is. The it Italians is. were gangsters and yeah. stuff like that. It's really the a lot of these, young, right, lot of these young brothers years. are clinging yeah. together um, because of the social economic conditions, because of what they're living in. You know, when I was going through my little stint and, and had it pretty rough in my household, you know, a, a pack of ramen noodles from the homies took me a long way. So it was just the camaraderie, just the mm -hmm. brotherhood. It's like I told them, you know, you got, uh, uh, to me, you know, coming from the street tribe, this and that, I don't see much of a difference, and I don't want to take it off topic, from the Alpha alpha Psi Alphas That's and the, the, the yeah, Alpha yeah, Phi and the Omegas, you know, yeah. 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 and I said, right, you know, and I said, well, you got Crip Phi Crip and right. you know, Blood Phi Blood, and, right. you know what I'm saying? So, but one of the things that they do, I do encourage the brothers doing, this is why Son and myself and um, Nundi and other people get out there, that we work with them is to take your own image in your own hands. Stop allowing people to defy you. Stop mm -hmm. allowing them to criminalize you, dehumanize right. you. Show what you're doing in the neighborhoods to clean up the neighborhoods, right. to bring it back. To practice, since go back on topic, defense. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you have strong neighborhoods with what they call these gangs, these street tribes, police, yes. in the hood where you came through, where we just right. been saying, police would be out there parked up, out there somewhere, you know, all the homies where right. we film at, and be police were out there parked one day. You know what I'm saying? And every time I step out there, hey, Yango, man, come here, man. Everything good. I mean, everything good in my hood, man. What y'all here for? This is all we just, you know, whoop to whoop. So that, that becomes a rapport. Mm -hmm. And not that it's so much a love or a like. They don't like me. They don't love no, me, but it has to be. You. They don't love me. They don't love me. you. Don't love you. But it has to be. It's a, it's, a, it's a respect factor knowing the type of sway that you have with, with mm -hmm. you know, with your street brothers and sisters that, you know, this type of thing and that they have, and that, not that I'm some kingpin or something, but that people are gonna listen and that right. it, it's just a matter of uh, uh, having their ear. Okay. So it's whether to do good in the community or whatever, and I tell them to police the police. That's right. Oh, absolutely. Yo, yeah. we're gonna have a, a, a cop watch on here real soon. Oh, that's Dude, what's we, happening. We awesome. gotta line so up we have to police the police, man. They don't, cause yeah. it's, it's apparent they don't love us, man. Oh, well, let me say something real quick, cause I know Ebony brought up a point, you know, about you going, down there and they're saying what you're doing here. I think, let me just say that, because you know, I know you talk about black people saying why are white people here. I'm gonna just give my take. I think with white people having their protests and with black people having their protests, I think there's a fear of the direction it's gonna go in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think there's a power struggle. Um, it's like when me and Yang went down to the uh, uh, Mike Brown protest, you know what I'm saying? When I saw B103 and uh, the other rate, WAOK there, I was just like, okay, man, it's not gonna, it's not, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It just yeah, did, it just yeah. took out of it. And then mm -hmm. they started playing music. Oh, wow. Like, oh, <laughs> having a hold down. Right, yeah, you know yeah, it became saying? very festive. So wow. it, it took, it, to me, it took out, out the revolutionary element or potential that it could have. So my, my, my thing is this, I, I uh, understand the threat because people, they're still stuck, white people and black people are still stuck in this leader, centralized leadership, and they have their own agendas. Mm -hmm. Because you had the, you know, and, and no, 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 since then, nothing bad about the LBGBT, but they were there, and they had their agenda, they were pushing their agenda, and I'm just like, what does my sexual that. preference have to do with this guy just being shot mm -hmm. down and killed here? You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I, and I'm not, and I'm not, you know, look, 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 we done had, you know, mm -hmm. people on the show, you know, I, I defended, Mm -hmm. You know, this group, so not only just stating the fact, right? I'm just stating the fact. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is that we all have interests, just like me and Yanga will go visit different organizations that be trying to recruit us. Mm -hmm. We're like, no, hold up, <laughs> we got a right. Right. right? That's why I come, you right? Know, and, and I and, and, and this is to the black Christians, you know, we go up in there and they and the first thing I said, look, we black masters. The brother, the one of the Christian brother gonna say, well, see, I don't like to label myself. No, oh. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that's but cool you for Christian. you. You're a Christian. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're a Christian, right. Yeah. So I'm saying, okay, when me and, when we come to visit y'all, the arena, we come to visit your organization, do not try to recruit us. We have an agenda already. What we're looking for is a common goal or a common coalition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not looking, I, I, because anything that's religious, 
I'm going to let you know right now, I'm an atheist. You pretty good. I'm an atheist. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Therefore, your, your religious agenda, I already know the agenda. They, they, yeah. they want to recruit you. So they that's money for the and that's, and that's everything, everything. But that's why black nationalism is the, is the answer. Black right. nationalism is the answer, the only solution. We're saying Absolutely. that as African people here in America, until we realize that we are a displaced nation. Right. That we have to come together collectively, despite it's like what Brother Malcolm taught us, and what Brother Malcolm said in the Ballad of the Bullet. Um, he said that he's a Muslim, and right. that but today he's not here to talk about his Muslim. He leaves his Islam in the closet. Absolutely. You know, we, we talk. You and I are a prime example, and with this show, prime example right. of Black Nat. Vince is a very spirit. You know, is a spiritualist. You know, he right. even wears the unk around his neck. I'm a Muslim. You're an atheist. Right. We come together, coming together on Black nationalism. It supersedes, you know, mm -hmm. we follow the philosophy of the, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, who said race first. That's right. And I would tell any Muslim, that's why in, in black nationalism, it's good to have all of these different people because Absolutely. a Muslim may not take it from you, they may not take it from that's you, right. so I can go in there and kick ass. Right. right. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I say, right. well, brother, you know, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know, you're not doing, you know what I'm saying? Right. If you're not right. putting race first, then it's all for not. Right. So the, the black nationalist understands that it's about the advancement and the betterment of, of, of an African people here in America. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to get on. And that's what we go back again to what's happening here. And I always will state that one of the things that they're using is that Willie Lynch divide and conquer. They make yeah. it a Mike Brown issue. Mm -hmm. They make it a Sean right. Bell issue. Right. They make it an Oscar Grant issue. And they don't look at it. We don't, they don't say, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. The black nationalist says, okay, you can say all of these people in, in our hearts and our condolences with the family. And, I, you know, we then our prayers or our thoughts or whatever we send out for the, for the people. But at the end of the day, and I'm not knocking – uh, uh, Trayvon Martin's mother, father, Mike Brown's mother, no father. But like I said this before on a show before, uh, when I went to a speaking engagement before, that when they was like, and, you know, this for Trayvon, I said, but Trayvon just didn't belong to you. Right. He right. belonged to you because he was your son, but the right. fact that he was a black that's male. That's our issue. Right. That's our that's issue. Exactly. Right. So you black, can't take mm -hmm. that. And the same with Mike Brown and with Eric Garner. You can't take that. That's not solely mm -hmm. yours. That's right. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. So you can't tell me how they, we, we, you know, the parents want you to protest like Even this. Even the purpose they want you to of their like life that. and the reason that they die, like the passion that, that leaves this generation. Exactly. That doesn't belong to you. That's why I say, you know, have they been programmed? Have all the parents of our black boys been programmed to come out and say, you know, don't, you know, you know, protest like, peacefully run, and, right. you know, we don't want our, son, our, our son's death to be in vain. I have one son mm -hmm. and I'm coming out with a match and I'm going to be the one <laughs> to start the riot. If you mess with my one son, you're it's a be, wrap. Be like, a I'm going to burn, burn, burn it down. I'm going to burn it down. Burn it down. I'm going to be a leader and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. You know. But yeah, it, it's really time. And, and going back to that, I think it's very important that we raise up a nation of of conscious, and when I say conscious, I don't mean, oh, I just live in somebody's basement or I just moved into a house. Right. I mean, I mean, really aware of who they are, aware of their rights. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to start, I have six children. Mm -hmm. And I'm, when I say that real revolutionaries are gonna homeschool their children, mm -hmm. because yeah, the what thing. they are mm -hmm. teaching your children mm -hmm. is nothing. And when I tell you, Georgia, the state of Georgia, there is no pipeline yeah. when it comes to school to school prison. To prison. There the is school, school is prison. Yeah. They are on wow. their way. I just said that same they thing are yesterday. on their way. Um, we live in South Atlanta. When I tell you, I had to take my son out of school within the first month yeah. of school. It was just like no. They put him in an all male gender program mm -hmm. where he had to walk with his hands behind his back. What? Where, yeah, and mm -hmm. he, he they would give him silent uh, lunch uh, where he would have to stand up and eat his lunch. Oh, and man. when I asked them, well, how did he get put in this program? They could never tell me. Yeah. Well, what is what is what is the purpose of this program? What? Well, well, who they could never tell me. Program that be, even they exists? said this is our third year, and you know we're gonna switch everything over. No, it's not. It's a program. No. And, who, and who, 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 exactly. This who is why we have to we have to get together so you can right. understand exactly. what's going on. When I go to uh, when I went to the um, open house. There were about two other parents. Exactly. In there. And I don't mind being everybody's mama in the school, but don't get mad when that lady is up there cussing again about somebody else's kids. But it, we have right. to we have to raise awareness amongst parents, you know, that they're not teaching our what children exactly. anything. If they're having Georgia history all through up to ninth grade or even further, they're not going to be prepared for a global society. Exactly. Right, right, right. Well, let me let me say this real quick. There has to be accountability on what you call the system too. So, you know, if you're a working parent and you're, you know, working from, you know, 
Monday through Friday, it's certain things you're not going to know about. So right. notify these this parents right. and right. saying, you know what, but they're not going to notify us. And that's why mm -hmm. I mean it needs to be transparency because they say, well, Yanga, you know, mm -hmm. we are a program. We're going to make your son stand up for hours. But you're going to be down. They never told us. Exactly. But it goes back to, man, and what we're saying, too, that's why I say exercising political rights. You know what I'm saying? Right. When we're talking about that vote thing, one of the things yeah. you vote for is school superintendent. Yeah. Right. 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 You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. I mean, you vote. We, we you know, we, yes. school leaders. Get in. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, we put these people into these places. And they right. are paid very well. And they pay well to, to come up with My kids don't even have programs. books in their school. Exactly. To come up with these programs. Man, let me tell you. It's like you said, I won't even, I don't even know if I'm going to have to take my son out if he doesn't get kicked. My youngest boy. <laughs> my youngest. And you'll be surprised how kids pick up. My youngest yes. boy, Amaru. Went in there and I didn't. I never told him to do this. And I said this one time <laughs> on the show before. They did it. It was time to do the pledge of allegiance. So he oh, wouldn't yeah. stand up. Mm -hmm. They asked Maru, that's "Why you don't child. stand up?" He said, "Because that's not my flag." Ooh. I know that's they right. They said, "He said, what's your flag?" Yeah, he said, true. "Red, black, and green." Oh, yeah, I never really? told him to. You know, so they call me when they want to talk to me. I didn't tell the truth. I said, "Well, I never told him." I said, "Well, we fly a red, black, and green flag," and I tell him that this is his flag. That's I didn't tell flag. him, you know. That that wasn't his flag, oh, but if he doesn't flag. feel like that, that's his flag. But at the same time, tell him don't be disrespectful. So he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to play, and he's he's not no, going to play. No, he's not being disrespectful. No, no, right, and, and that's why I told him. No, 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 that's, that's why I told him. You're not. He's not going to be disrespectful. He's not going to say, you know, screw your flag, mm -hmm. f your flag, or whatever. But he's not going to pledge gonna allegiance to your flag. flag. To something. Not he's not going to pledge right. his life, his allegiance to exactly. something that he doesn't believe in. Okay, yes, so my question is, what was the problem? Remember when we had that show with Not, Miriam? Yeah, I don't think it was a problem. I think it shocked them yeah. that because my son is just in first grade. Oh, you know I love saying? it. Yeah. So, yeah. I love Remember it. how we talked about this black nationalists? Yeah. We had never agreed to black supremacy. We never agreed to black separatism. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if somebody said, well, you're a traitor to that, I never agreed to that. Right. It's I never same. agreed right. to that. Right. right. So, so when they say, Pledge of allegiance. That means you're right. saying, "No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to leave." Right? Because right. he's right. One so thing no, must, wrong with he, that. exactly. Well, one thing he understands, and that's what we have to understand about so-called being free from slavery. A free man is given an option. Right. We were never given that option. You either given an option to join this country, mm -hmm. to return to Africa, or to go have some land of your own. Were we given the option to return to Africa? You Liberia, they did Monrovia. Yeah, but that was some later. Of them, they that wasn't was even, later. Yeah, some of them, and it wasn't okay, even a mass. Like, was it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like we really going to take y'all. Yeah, it wasn't a mass program. But how more, you going to get there? Yeah, you can it was go. More experimental with it. It's like let's take these little group right here. So we were never given an option. The Thirteenth Amendment freed you, and then they turn around and the Fourteenth Amendment say. Unless, unless, right, that's you that commit loophole. a crime, right? And you commit a crime against, you know, are you convicted of a felony? But my question is, if I never agreed to be a part of your nation, how the hell am I held accountable to your laws? Mm -hmm. right. right. So what felony did I commit to be? So the black man is never really. So some of us, like me, I'm, you know, not. I am a citizen of the Republic of New Africa. I'm right. a New African. You know what I'm saying? So and, I, and that's where my citizenry lie. Um, but because a lot of us have not made that choice. And we're showing it now, if more than ever, I would say to people to check out, and this is the plug for the Republic of New Africa, is the Yanga Cam on. Yes, Here's the Yanga Cam. Check out Republic of New Africa because this nation is clearly showing you that you are not looked at as a citizen. Mm -hmm. You were never accepted as a citizen. You never will be accepted as a citizen. So check out your other rights. Check out other avenues and, 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 and things that we can, and measures you can take to ensure your right to life. Wait, yeah, yeah. but you got to apply to the FCC. See, mm -hmm. yeah. to be a war. <laughs> see, bro, right. you're not black. You're not black. You're black. <laughs> you say black. Bro, Justice, <laughs> Justice Tooney, I believe, Justice Tooney or Tinney, in the Dred Scott case, stated that the black man has no rights that the white man is bound, bound to. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Um, they showed you. And they've been showing us that ever since, ever since. Ever since we were free. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, quote, I'm sorry, quote unquote, Allegedly. free. Mm -hmm. But let me uh, <laughs> ask this question to the panel. All right. Get some international perspective on this whole Ferguson and injustice justice system. Uh, We've had a number of countries speak out on the whole Ferguson situation. That's right. Uh, France, China, China. Syria, mm -hmm. North Korea, North Korea, Russia, mm -hmm. just to name a few. Um, Cuba. China said the least, because you know China pretty strict on their people. But what China said mm -hmm. was that every country has its own human rights issues. Right. So they didn't really go too far, but um, they basically said Russia, this is a human rights issue, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Russia basically said, uh, well, North Korea said that the U.S. is a graveyard of human rights, mm. and Russia basically said that the United States needs to fix 
<laughs> our mm -hmm. own issues here uh, instead mm -hmm. of trying to be the aggressive world mentor right. and police every other country on what they're doing in their countries, that which I sure. totally agree with 100%. Can I get y'all thoughts on that? I'm glad you said that. You know, and that's why I want to, uh, what you just said, I want to bring that to the council, Yanga. Okay. Yeah. You know, because we got people in our community talking about what's that going to do with black people? See, right. we got to worry about ourselves, yo. And so when we got people out there standing up mm -hmm. saying this stuff, right. we can present a platform mm -hmm. like the council mm -hmm. and find, you know, I, I don't I'm like you, but I don't get mad at the grand jury. I get mad when our people mm -hmm. say, oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. make up excuses. Well, see, he was flinging his arms mm -hmm. and he was yeah. showing the cigarettes. Oh, I've read so, so much so, of that on the end. Oh, yeah. Right, so to keep my sanity, mm -hmm. I gather a group of my peers, thanks out to Yang and, and Nundi. So I'm going to ask them, you know, what do you find this officer guilty? Not to keep my sanity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, where it goes from there, you know, whatever y'all want to do in the general public or around the world, that's up to y'all. We just there to find them guilty or not guilty. So. With that being said, you know, uh, my concern is how we view it. Right. I, they they going to view it. So like I said, they view us as superhumans and Hulk Hogan. Uh, uh, so I'm not trying demons, to reason. Right, demons. Demon llama. I'm not trying to reason with that. I'm not trying to reason with that. I'm not trying to change that mentality. I'm not trying to get the white man to love me or respect me. Right. Gideon. <laughs> That's not my interest. You know what I'm saying? My interest is the mentality of my people. You know what I'm saying? So... That's just, well, that's, you know. that's a huge point because a lot of the things I've read, you know, about um, the Mike Brown case was, mm -hmm. oh, he was a thug or, He's you know, uh, 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 the first thing is that his actions justified the illegal actions of, of the, the police. Cop, right. His actions did not justify illegal actions. If right. he stole a blunt, then maybe he should go to jail. Right. You know, maybe whatever, right. whatever, Place, whatever your process, exactly, whatever your process is, then do that. But I have a really big problem with the self-perpetuated ignorance of black people who yeah. say, well, you know, as long as we kill each other, we don't have any right to, to be worried about anyone else. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, hold on, because yeah. that don't make yeah, any sense. Right. If you yeah. understand so so sociology, if you understand, oh you know, communities and that those communities don't have the structures that they need, and if you understand Understand us being a tribal people. If you understand people, if you understood that ninety-eight percent of white people are killed by other white people, thank you. then you would understand First, well, thank you. that black-on-black black crime is not a black oh, no. issue. Yeah. It is just the way it is. Black on Most. black crime. You, first of all, my tax dollars doesn't pay a black right. man. To to black exactly. Man. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So it's yeah. apples right. and oranges. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Policemen are in a position of authority and power. That's right. what I don't I don't understand right. how people can't distinguish that difference between police uh, going around here killing right. black man with the unarmed black man with unarmed. impunity right, right. and black on black crime in neighborhoods right. where we have been uh, socially, economically, right. yes, oppressed, uh, politically uh, oppressed yes. since we were brought to this country right. 500 years ago. And people are always talking about. Uh, well, you know, black a race, black well, a race war is going to start. A race war is going to start. A race war started it's, 500 years right. ago. Okay. Yeah. And they're, they're the only side still actively participating right. in the race war. Right. Which yeah, is, we hands up, don't shoot a long time hands ago. Hands up, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I we can't was calling on a long Jesus time ago. a long yeah, time ago, right. and he hasn't came to come to fix this yet. <laughs> yeah, right. So we, we've been doing that a long time. And it kills me. These Uncle Tom Negroes. These bootlicking Negroes that say, oh, here's a black, black people killing black people. <laughs> uh, like I tell anybody, you know, go just common sense. If you and your brother are fighting, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Anybody got siblings, you and your brother mm -hmm. are fighting, y'all gonna be fighting like cats and dogs. I dare you let an outsider come in right. and yeah. hit your brother right. in the head. It's a problem. He can, be, he can hit your brother in the head, call himself hit, helping you. Yes. You and your brother would well, turn around and whoop <laughs> his butt. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you would turn right. around. And, so, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Stay out. So, for all of those people, for those white folks who say, well, y'all killing these, stay out. I've been there. Stay out of our business. And when we They're talk about black-on-black black crime, I'm from West Trenton. Mm -hmm. I know black-on-black black crime. I've seen, and you know, it's not anything that I'm like proud about that my brothers are killed. But I've also seen that I was okay. These people having issues with each other, they weren't coming after me. See, now, that, now, the police coming up and, and assaulting me because you think that I'm doing drugs, that's an there. issue. Yeah, exactly. That's well, an well, issue. I'm, 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 now, I, somebody got, if I got to deal with you, we believe in street justice. Yeah. If I got to deal with you for whatever you did to my family, then you, your skin just happened to be black. Wait, wait I'm, I'm confused here. 
What does black on black crime have to do with an illegal chokehold? Not I'm a damn sorry. thing. I'm, not, I'm not, confused. You're not, not confused. Not, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing okay, at all. We're and it's these. Let me bring just, it I want just one time, man. Make sure Vince yeah. go. And it's these. It's these. One of the things is, is first of all, it's these boot licking over time Negroes. That's the first thing. But I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to say this uh, real quick when we talk about the human rights issue and violations. The world's making those statements North Korea, China, That's Russia. Right is basically they're letting us know as black people, Africans here in America, get your act together. Mm -hmm. right. Bring it to the world court. Mm -hmm. right. Quit mm -hmm. But what they do is they pay these Negroes, like something like Dr. Thrash he says, shout out Dr. Thrash, if you didn't say anything <laughs> right, you said these things right. When you talk about these Negroes who have sold us out, if you didn't say anything right, brother said that right. When he talks about these Negroes who sold us out, they pay these Negroes to keep it a civil rights issue. That's right. right. You know That's what I'm saying? Right. The, the national, the revolutionary, the black nationalist, the revolutionary black nationalist, understands that revolution is just not a national issue but an international issue right. so we have to be mm -hmm. international right. so when we're, we're understanding that they're telling us these nations are telling us get your act together bring it to the world court and we got we'll your back right. You. Right. we got your back so I'm saying this and let my dear brother go That's for right. us revolutionaries out there who are saying that who are on the tracks of the, the likes of Malcolm and other greats who have followed those footsteps and who have preceded him in this line of thinking Let's take it back to an international issue of human rights violation and the charges of genocide be brought against this corrupt nation who is systematically targeting us and killing us and using their police officers who are only enforcers of a capitalist system to practice repression. Amen. I love Amen. My brother. He said a mouthful. I was about to steer the conversation into the direction of solutions and, and what you just stated about going to the UN. And I, I actually read an article that stated there was a group trying to form a coalition mm -hmm. to Let's go to the UN and charge the United States government with black genocide. Let's do it. And I read the article and my hair just stood up. Mm -hmm. like, Let's do it. like that is something that really mm -hmm. needs to be looked into. So with that being said, we got a few minutes left on the show. Okay. I want to go into solutions because we like to talk about solutions here on the arena. Um, and so for me, one of the solutions that we talked about earlier is transparency in the legal process and yes, the sir. grand jury um, process. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is we have to get the language of the laws changed because okay. I saw this video uh, that this white woman did and she stated why it was so easy for cops to get away with murdering uh, unarmed black men. Right. And she basically said that um, there's a statute written in the law that states that a police officer only has to have a reasonable suspicion mm -hmm. right. that their life is in danger or the public's life is in mm. danger. Right. Doesn't say that that suspicion has to be right or wrong. Just right. They just have to have a reasonable suspicion so broad as that mm -hmm. they're in danger or that the public is in danger. <coughs> and so with that being said, she went on to say that it's easy to sway public opinion against the unarmed black person because this country as a whole has a biased opinion against black people. Mm, and right. that was started once slavery ended and there was this hugely racist film called The Birth of a Nation. That's right. Uh, one of my white movies. I'm sure right a lot of you good old boys know about that there movie. I know but, about uh, that right there. Okay. <laughs> but um, in The Birth of a Nation, it basically talked about how wild and crazy and, and, and un- yeah. trained it and untamed that black men were and how they would just rape and pillage white women and, right. and steal you know, and kill everything woman. if the if they weren't under the white man's control wow. and mm -hmm. so all of these laws that we're that I'm talking about changing they've been they were set up way back then right. mm -hmm. and they were meant to keep us oppressed and keep us down and keep us targeted right. you know so that's the main thing we have to do is to change the language of the laws all right mm -hmm. ebony um, ebony well, <clears throat> I think pretty much everything I said has been about solutions. Pull up on your congressmen, <laughs> <laughs> pull up on your state representatives, um, organize, you know, plant those seeds into the next generation, come together. It, you know, whatever we can agree on, we can agree on. I always right. say I can work with the Klan if they want to get Al Sharpton out of the um, way. <laughs> but then I found out that the Klan was actually paying him. Shoot. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> no, wow. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, the thought, the thoughts in the, in the <laughs> pictures of <laughs> Ebony Knight do not YouTube. reflect Comcast right, right, or the arena. <laughs> <laughs> my solution. Did they say y'all was a comedian? <laughs> oh, my solution is to not <laughs> knock other people's solutions. Mm -hmm. We all got good solutions. But be open minded. Them, yeah, be right. open minded. Put them all on the table. And let's execute them all. You know, one of my solutions go back to the old school and. Yanka can rouse me on this. Just arm black men. Just arm, arm you know, mm -hmm. Cleveland, which is so ironic, with is an open carry state. Oh, wow. But you're going to call the police on the young black man? Not if you're a black man in Walmart carrying a fake toy gun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so, I say that they, they need to start seeing us armed more yeah, because yeah. I needed to, them to not be surprised when we're standing outside armed. Yeah. They need to see that we are armed. Yeah, we are yeah. no that's longer unarmed. What they're afraid Legally. Of. That's what the white supremacy system is afraid of, that we're going to arm ourselves. We are. going to somehow uprise and overthrow this white and this is, supremacist system. And this is not a theory that I had. This is a fact. Back when Huey and them, when they were arming themselves, they were arming the group, the mm -hmm. police. He had to call his captain, mm -hmm. yeah. call his yeah. supervisor. We got yeah. these niggas mm -hmm. out here, yeah. but they, hey. When you know your yeah. laws and your rights, yeah, you see like, all you know, my children. Exactly, because they was like, yo, if you're going to violate my constitutional <laughs> rights. But one of the things that we have to do, it goes back to like Ebony said, and, 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 and my biggest thing is mass political education. Mm -hmm. It's because what, yes. they're doing is, yeah. what they're doing at a young age is they criminalizing us. That's yeah. right. And once they can get, to get you in there and they can get you with that record mm -hmm. for that marijuana, for that whatever, right. whatever, oh, yeah. and then you got a oh, felony, yeah. you can't arm yourself. Mm -hmm. right. That's you know right. What I'm saying? Exactly. So the, the, the thing they're doing is snatching them up 12, 13, they're giving them records that way that they can't arm themselves. They and can't, now they're they using the school exercise. as a way to put them into the system. Exactly. Ooh, if you get in trouble in school, you can be right. put into the system. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Automatically. So, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in my, my solution is in the infamous words of my man Chuck D. Fight the powers that be. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Snatch the power. <laughs> Snatch the power. Snatch the power. Elvis was a hero hey, to most, but Elvis. 1.1 trillion dollar uh, spending power and do something productive with it. Let's do something with it. Stop buying all the rims, homie. Yeah, man. You can't get all the rims and all the things like that, man. Collectiveness. Yes. Two minutes. So. Oh, we, we got two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, yeah, yeah. so. Go close us out with a final thought like Jerry Springer does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. oh he's so, so, said wrap it up. Oh, wrap, wrap it up. up. Okay, all right. Wrap Next up. week we got, uh, 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 we got the council, I guess. And yeah. then we got more guests. We got a long list of people for 2015. We got Professor Griff and Jaja. -Ja. We want to see you on it's the show. It's going digital. 2015 right. is going to be hot. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, it's going, going digital on the 2015 in the arena. The Check arena. us out. Thank you for having me. Peace. Thank you. 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 Thank you.